once given a print for a part and asked if we could make it in-house. As usual, my answer was, of course we can make it. We're machinists. We can make anything. Your question should be, can we make it profitably? Now, the part wasn't terribly complex, so the powers that be told me to program it in Machine One to demonstrate our capability to the customer, but that I would not be able to buy tooling or fixturing as we didn't have a contract yet. So I programmed the part with the tooling we had laying around and created the operations so that it could be made in two vices on a four-axis mill. Now because I wasn't able to order tooling, I had to sacrifice efficiency and that's always bothered me. But for a prototype part, I told myself that this was no big deal. The parts came out pretty good, passed inspection, and that was the end of it. Fast forward six months and my boss told me, oh hey, can you get the programs and setup documentation down to the shop floor on that electrical enclosure? The Navy gave us a contract to make 300 a month and we need to get started ASAP. I said, whoa, I, I need to revisit that. Remember, I need to order some tools and fixture materials. He said, we don't have time for any of that. Don't touch the program, just send it out as is. If it isn't broke, don't fix it. I tried to argue the importance of refining that program for production, but he was unwilling to hear it. So because we weren't willing to spend a couple hundred dollars up front, we ended up locked into a process that was two or three times less efficient than it could have been and is likely still running exactly the same way to this day. Even if we had bought some tooling and didn't get the contract, we almost certainly could have used that tooling on other jobs, but instead we threw away hundreds of hours of open capacity and labor hours. I've seen this happen time and time again almost everywhere I've ever worked. A programmer or machinist has to rush through a prototype or a new part only for that rush job to go into production later while the programmer and machinist are addressing other emergencies and they aren't given the opportunity to design production fixtures or implement job specific tooling. This happens in other facets of the business as well. Accounting, planning, quoting, outside processes, software development and implementation, you name it. Despite the best intentions, when you say, let's worry about that later, later never comes. It's just putting out one fire after another all the way out to eternity. So what do you do to fix that? On the one hand, sometimes you have to get things done with what's on hand. It doesn't make sense to blow $5,000 in fixtures and tooling without any promise of future orders. But if that's a risk that you can't take, then at a bare minimum, you have to be willing to revisit these jobs later when the contract comes. Charge non-recurring engineering fees for both the prototype and the first production run, and plan for some time to develop the production processes when the contracts roll in. Of course, many jobs can be done with standard tooling and standard fixture components and vices, but how many times have you done a quick one-off job, then later wished you would put more time in on fixture design and tool selection? And scaling is something else to think about. When it comes to how your processes work, if you have a 10-man team and you see something in your day-to-day -day procedures that's wasting 30 seconds of your team's time every five minutes, imagine how bad that's going to be once you have 100 people on your team. It's so much better to fix these little inefficiencies when you're still small in scale rather than try to change things when 100 people are now set in their ways and need to be retrained. When I see anything, no matter how small, that's causing confusion or wasting time, it makes me crazy because I always assume that the production run is coming or that the company's gonna scale up and before you know it, this little daydream will become a nightmare. I've seen it way more often than I wish I had and I know I'll see it again. So take the time to make sure that everything you do is sustainable, efficient, and looking forward toward the future instead of just the present. And whenever you have the opportunity, build automation, ease of use, simplicity, and sustainability into your processes. That's an investment that'll pay dividends later and may just be the one thing that separates you from your competition. Thanks for listening. Check out our online store at store.titansacnc.com and help us support free education while buying the tools that you just might use on your next one-off job that you may never see again or may just become a 10,000-piece order.